Hello everybody, Waffle Time here, and today we are going to be summoning the twins, pouring eye drops all over them until they are entirely moisturized, feel better, thank us, kindly hand us their loot, and peacefully leave. Just kidding, we're gonna poke them in the eye. We'll be doing all of this by first talking about your armor and accessories, then an arena setup, your buff potions, and lastly a method for each class to prevail in this battle. First, let's take a look at your armor. If you're anything but a summoner, you're gonna want adamantite or titanium armor. Personally though, I like using the melee headpiece no matter what class I use aside from summoner, just because it has a tremendous amount of defense over the other class's headpieces, and in early hard mode battles like these, I strongly prefer prioritizing defense. Now that that's said and done, let's move on to some accessories that all classes should be utilizing. These include a cross necklace or some variation of it, some turbo fast boots to keep you from being beaten to a pulp by flying eyeballs, a charm of myths, a good set of wings, and either a worm scarf or a brain of confusion. For this battle I found two extra bits extraordinarily helpful. The Shield of Cthulhu is fantastic for helping avoid the lunges and dashes the twins throw at you. Also I found that using the goat mount or the unicorn mount was a godsend when it came to the second forms of the twins. They really help you evade a lot of their attacks. Speed is key in this fight after all. Speaking of speed, let's go on to your arena setup. If you've already defeated a mechanical boss, you should definitely take the time to threaten or blackmail the steampunker into giving you a blend of matic so that you can make asphalt. Asphalt makes you run ridiculously fast and the twins stand no chance against you on it since it makes it so much easier to evade their attacks. It makes you fast enough to summon them, run to their house, sleep with their wife, teach their kids how to ride a bike, drive their car, and be back in time to finish the fight before the night's halfway over. I really like asphalt if you couldn't tell. If this is going to be your first attempt at a mechanical boss in your world, you'll do well with regular long row of platforms. Also make sure to utilize bonfires and heart lanterns. They help slow down the cursed flame debuff that spasmatism inflicts on you if he lands a hit on you. If you aren't rolling with asphalt, make sure you have a ton of speed and mobility. Now let's move on to your buff potions, which truly brings the chat out of you against any boss. As per usual, I strongly recommend Iron Skin, Endurance, Regeneration, Swiftness, and Wrath or Rage. Also a quick snack for the well-fed buff. If you're going with summoning, make sure to drink a summoning potion just so you have an extra unit. If you're using a magic weapon, make sure to drink a mana regeneration and magic power potion. And lastly, if you do end up using something with a bow and arrow, an archery potion helps tons. I've had enough of an eyelash not being stuck on these bastards' pupils. Let's go expose them to very bright lights and cause them to slowly go blind at the ripe Age of 30. Let's start with a method for ranged users. Now normally I would use the Mega Shark for a boss like this, but just in case this is your first mechanical boss, I'm going to show it can be done with an Onyx Blaster as well. The Onyx Blaster also works fantastic, especially when paired with i Bullets. Now, one thing I said long, long ago was that I always kill Retinazer first just so I don't have to deal with the laser spam the whole time. But I found that it's a different story in Master Mode. Spasmatism's Cursed Flame debuff is even stronger in Master Mode and can drain your health far quicker than you think. So in this run, you'll see me target Retinazer only, but honestly, for Master Mode, I recommend taking out Spasmatism first. Then again, it is totally personal preference and depends on your playstyle, but I had a much easier time with killing Spasmatism first and then dealing with Retinazer after the fact. As you may be able to see, speed is very crucial in this fight, not only for avoiding the lasers and Cursed Flame, but also for dodging each of the eyes tremendous dashes. The dashes are also where the Shield of Cthulhu comes strongly in handy. Another weapon I found extraordinarily useful for defeating these bosses was the Daedalus Stormbow, which works fantastic when paired with Holy Arrows. If you keep your distance, dodge the Cursed Flame to the best of your ability, and keep shooting, you should have no problem with this method. Now let's move on over to a melee method, where we can physically touch the flame-throwing, laser-shooting, flying eyeballs instead of just throwing objects at them from a safe distance. For this method, I used a Shadow Flame Knife. I know, right? It's not actually completely worthless like we all thought. This Shadow Flame knife inflicts a debuff called Shadow Flame. Surprise! Wow! It actually really puts in the works on the twins, seeing as you're able to keep a pretty good distance away from these guys. Another big plus aside from the debuff it disses out is that it bounces from enemy to enemy, but not frequently enough to where you'll have to worry about these guys both going in their second forms. So pretty much it softens up the other eye to a decent extent while you're taking the other eye. If you really want to go off with this method, you could always use flasks or magma stones since this weapon's debuff will stack with the others. It's honestly a great pair. I'm also going to take this opportunity to briefly touch up on their attacks. In the first form, Retinazer will shoot lasers at a decent pace and switch to lunging at the player. In its second form, it doesn't dash anymore, but will rather shoot fast lasers at the player than get level with the player and shoot a super fast flurry of lasers. Again, with speed, a lot of this stuff is avoidable. You'll often see me jumping and falling in between the gaps of the lasers whenever Retinazer decides to shoot a flurry. As for Spasmatism, his first form is shooting cursed flames at the player while staying level with them, and switching to a dash attack. For his second form, however, his cursed fireballs turn into a clear as day violation to the Geneva Convention, and decide to transform into a human crisping flamethrower, so that does tremendous damage along with the fact that his dashes actually go to great lengths. But yeah, keep your distance, dodge the fire and lasers, keep on throwing and you'll be in business. Next up, let's move on to the mage method. Before I say anything else, absolutely make sure you have a mana flower and an ass load of mana potions because if you're anything like me, you'll summon them, forget them in your chest. Fuck, 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 fuck me. 
and that really isn't good in regards to your overall efficiency in this battle. For this battle, I used the Crystal Serpent and the Golden Shower Spell Tome, but some other great weapons to use for this are the Sky Fracture and the Meteor Staff. I recommend using the Golden Shower no matter which primary weapon you decide to use though, just to get their defense down and make the fight that much easier for you. This method is quite self-explanatory, just use the Golden Shower book to urinate on their eyeballs and laugh at them because they don't have any hands to wipe it off, then use your primary weapon and put them out of their misery. The Crystal Serpent makes short work of these guys, as will the other mage weapons. All you really have to worry about is the same as the other strategies, just not taking a massive amount of damage from the Cursed Flame debuff that Spasmatism offers and not getting completely juggled like I do constantly from Retinazer. Also it's worth mentioning, if you if you have access to the wizard NPC in your world, he sells some really useful stuff for mages, including an item called the Crystal Ball, which when placed and used gives you the Clairvoyance buff, which gives you all kinds of helpful mage perks, such as extra mana, more magic damage, more magic critical chance, and even a small reduction on your mana usage. If you're turbo loaded up with mana potions, make good use of your dashing and evasion, you're going to do fantastic with the mage method. Last but not least, let's head into the summoner method, which was actually a lot easier than I thought. Matter of fact, after this fight, I think I'm ready to do a summoner playthrough on stream. It'll be fun, and my lifespan will only shorten by a cooling crisp 20 years from doing it, so it's on. So for this method, I use the spider armor and the sanguine staff. Honestly, there isn't too much to go over. We all know how summoners do it. Summon all your minions, then scream and run from anything that can do damage to you in hopes that your minions can hurt them more. In this case, the sanguine staff did very well against the twins. The only problem I had is that the bats are kind of tough to control, and oftentimes would accidentally get both bosses into their second forms, making them quite a bit harder to deal with. But still, on the simple fact that all you have to do is focus on evading, it's not too bad at all. I used the bewitching table to get an extra summon, I made good use of the cool whip whenever I was in proper distance, but mainly let the bats go to work. You do take heavier damage, but getting warding on all your accessories really helps pick up the slack for the low armor your spider gear provides. So go hit your goblin tinkerer if you have the platinum. No, 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 no. Don't hit him up. Hit him. Hit him. Beat him. Make him hurt. Make it count. Kill him in one shot. He deserves it for giving you a modifier like keen or full eating. What a dick. Anyways, if you don't have the time or patience to grind for the Sanguine Staff, you could always use the Spider Staff, but if you do do this method, you will have to put up walls behind your arena. Which is definitely heavy usage of resources, but makes the spiders able to reach them properly. With this method, as long as you keep evading their attacks and let your summons go to work, the summoner route will go very well for you. Unfortunately though, that's going to be all for today, you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this, and comment down in the comment section below. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to join our Discord. Link is in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching. You're all the best and I'll see you guys next time.